Okay, thank you. So our next speaker is going to be Amir Safavi. Uh, Amir is a tech lead uh, working at Google as part of a team developing features for small business owners in search and maps. Uh, he is motivated by working on software that changes people's habits in a positive way. When he's not working, he's a keen cyclist who also enjoys running and swimming. He was inspired to give this talk after wondering why, as an industry where time to market is so critical, we repeatedly underestimate how long our projects are going to take. He's given many presentations at Google, but this is his first time presenting here at BrizTech. His talk today is entitled, All Your Estimates Are Awful. Please join me in welcoming Amir. Thank you. Hello, BrizTech. Um, my name's Amir, uh, and I'm here to talk to you about software engineering estimates. So I actually used to live in Bristol um, back when I was a student, and it's great to be back. It's, uh, it's a great city, I really love being here, so thanks for, thanks for having me. Um, there's gonna be some plenty of time at the end for Q&A, so make a mental note of questions as you're going along. Um, if you prefer to interact with my digital self, you can find me at The Sporty Geek on Twitter as well. So, um, so what qualifies me to stand up here and talk to you about estimates? Um, well, I've actually been a software engineer for about 10 years now, um, and I'm currently a tech lead at Google. So I'm in a position where I often have to provide estimates, not just for my own work, but often for, uh, on behalf of my team as well. Um, so this is the, the product I work on. It's kind of a sort of an admin console. Um, so if you own uh, a business, you can manage your business presence on Google. Um, so you can uh, update your opening hours, you can reply to reviews from customers, you can add photos. Uh, I'm, an, I'm an owner uh, of Google UK, so that's why I see it when I search for that business. Um, I've had to make a lot of estimates whilst building this product, um, but I'm not gonna pretend to any of you that I'm, I'm great at estimates now, because, because I'm not. Um, but I have learned a lot along the way, and I wanted to share a bit of that with you. All right, so I'd like to start off, first of all, with a little bit of audience interaction. It's the end of the day, so I hope you've got uh, a little bit of energy left. Um, so please put your hand up if at some point this year uh, you've been asked to come up with an estimate for some piece of work that uh, you're about to do. Great, everyone, okay. Now put your hand back up if at least one of those estimates you gave this year turned out to be wrong. All right. Everyone again, um, you're, in, you're in the right place. Um, <laughs> now, um, now put your hand up if that estimate you had, uh, the one you thought about in your head, uh, turned out to be wrong actually because um, the work took less time than you estimated for. <laughs> okay, we've got a few, okay. Maybe about five, 10 percent of you, okay. And then I guess this will be the rest of you. Put your hand up if actually the work took longer than you estimated. Great, okay, the rest of you. So, um, yeah, whether you put your hand up the first time or the second time, you're, you're in the right place. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna try, try and, and explain why that might have been. Um, right, so um, I'd like to tell a story now. And um, it's actually a story from, from very early in my career. And it's a story that inspired me to write this talk. So, um, before I worked at Google, I was working at an investment bank and sitting on a trading floor that looked uh, much like this one. So one day, um, one of the traders came across and, and our, our team was working on building uh, pricing and risk management software. One of the traders came across and started shouting and hurling abuse at us because uh, one of the features uh, that, that, that he relied on was actually missing from uh, the new system that we'd, we'd just built. So everyone, everyone in the team was kind of a little bit in shock. Um, and I was actually the most junior engineer in the team at the time. Um, but I was also full of energy and enthusiasm. And I thought I had an idea for how we could fix it. So I jumped up and said, don't worry, uh, I, can, I can fix this. Um, and the trader was like, okay, great. Uh, well, how long is it gonna take? Um, so I said, two days, straight away, two days. Um, and I said it very confidently, and like I knew what I was talking about. So then, 
Um, I parked everything else I was working on, and I started right away. And I worked flat out for the next two days. I got in early. I was there beyond 10 p.m. those nights. Um, and after those two days, it wasn't quite finished. So, um, so actually, you know, I, I, was, I was very enthusiastic. So I, I stayed in over the weekend, and I worked right through the weekend continue, and continued working on it. At the end of the weekend, it still wasn't quite finished. So I continued working on it into the next week. Um, at the end of the next week, it still wasn't quite finished. Um, so I continued on it uh, through most of the next week as well. So um, at the end of this, uh, I, I, I fixed it. I, I, I sent an email out to say that this, this, this feature was ready. And that was 14 days after I started. Um, but nonetheless, I was, I was really excited. I'd, I'd done it, I'd fixed this, I'd, I'd built this feature. Um, you know, and I'd, I'd come, come through a lot of technical hurdles along the way uh, to, to get there. So after I sent the email out, I sort of assumed that all the praise would start coming in. People would be con congratulating me, slapping me on the back, and, and, and basically sort of treating me like a hero, because I was, right? Um, well, I, I was very wrong, <laughs> actually. Um, First of all, my manager was, uh, was not very happy. Um, she's actually sat next to me, so she knew how hard I'd be work working on this. I'd worked like a zillion hours the last two weeks. Um, but as she explained, had she known up front it was gonna take me two weeks to finish this, she would have uh, put someone else on the project as well to help me. Um, she also would have asked one of the other teams that worked for her to put in place a workaround so there was some substitute for this feature not being there. Um, and also, apparently, um, over those two weeks, whenever her or anyone else in the team had asked, um, you know, how much longer was this gonna take, uh, I sort of uh, reacted really badly and said, uh, just another couple of days, leave me alone. Um, on top of that, the trader was obviously not very happy. Um, this was a new system we'd migrated to, and this feature existed in the old system. Uh, missing in the new one. Then I told him it was gonna take two days and he'd have it back. And it was two weeks and I'd actually just delivered like an MVP which turned out to be a little bit buggy as well. Um, <laughs> so, so yeah, Th this was the point in my career when I realized um, just how important software engineering estimates are. A, a decent estimate up front really sets the right expectations um, and it's a lot, lot more useful than a bad but shorter estimate. So you might be wondering, well, well what's, what's the problem here? Well, the, the real problem actually is um, we don't have one of these. We don't have a crystal ball. Uh, we can't just look into the future and find out, ooh, your code will hit production on 6th of February, 2020. <laughs> that would be really good, wouldn't it, if we, if we had that? Um, so, um, so instead, we have to come up with a guess. We have to use our judgment. We have to estimate. But but why, why, is that, why is that so hard, right? We, we do that in other walks of life all the time. So these are two pictures of me um, earlier this year at Brighton Marathon. Um, so that's me on the left just before the start. And on the right, that's me at the finish at uh, a Brighton Pier. I've collected my medal. Um, now my wife was there to, to come, and, come and watch me. So she needed an estimate of when I was gonna finish. Um, you know, she didn't really want to be waiting around all day in the cold, um, but she was also anxious that, you know, she wouldn't miss me crossing the finish line. Now, this was the first time uh, I'd ever run a marathon. Uh, and, um, but nonetheless, I came up with an estimate uh, of when I would finish, and I gave sort of a 15 minute time window, and I finished, bang in that window. I got it just right. So that was like a 7% tolerance on my total time. Um, on top of that, there was actually an app that Brighton Marathon provided where it gave my expected finish time based on checkpoints I was hitting along the way and that, that updated in real time. So you might be asking yourself, well, we can estimate marathon finish times. Even though this is my first marathon, we can estimate marathon finish times really well. So why can't we do it with software development projects? Well, <laughs> Running a marathon is, is quite different. 
unless you're Mo Farah, uh, if, if you're me, there's hundreds or thousands of people in front of you that you can just follow, and uh, you know exactly where you're going. And the route is published beforehand, so you, you, you still know where you're going. There's friendly people that sort of point you in the right direction. Um, and you also know exactly how long it's going to be. It's, it's 26.2 miles. Software development estimation, uh, software development project, on the other hand, would be more like doing a marathon through this. It's, uh, it's a dark, uh, perilous forest. Uh, there's lots of tree roots, um, which kind of represent technical and political hurdles. And they're there to stumble you, uh, to, for, for you to trip up along the way. The terrain is uncharted. You have no map. But you know, if you do finally make it to the finish line, perhaps bruised from all your falls, it might just happen that you get there and someone says to you, ah, there's actually been some more requirements that have come in. We need you to run another 10 miles. I hope you're, you're okay with that. Um, but you, know, you, you could ask yourself, well, if the terrain is not uncharted, lots of people have been there before, like a marathon, lots of people have done it ahead of you, then why are you doing it in the first place, right? If someone's already written this software, um, why aren't you using a library or something that they've built and building it on top of that? So it's, it's sort of the very nature of, of what we're doing in software development, um, that it often is uncharted. Okay, so if we accept that premise then, we, you know, and we say that software development time estimation is challenging and it's error prone, then why, why, do, why do we even bother with it at all? Well, estimates, estimates are important. Um, decision makers need some, at least a very rough idea, of uh, the, how long a project's gonna take. This is, this is a very common example. Um, there'll be two projects that look like very attractive proposals on the table. One, uh, you know, but both of them have very high impact, both very sexy, um, they're both gonna bring a lot of money into the company. At this point, uh, even just a very, very rough and ready estimate to say that we think project A is gonna take a lot longer than project B is enough to avoid that, that opportunity cost of investing resources in the wrong one. Right, so um, now I'm gonna go through some of the reasons why estimates are often awful, so don't despair. After that, we'll go into some of the lessons I've learned and, uh, and what you can do about it as well. So reason number one, we never needed them. We never actually needed them before. So this is a picture of me, uh, I think, looking overly smug at my, my graduation uh, 10 years ago, just, just up the road at, uh, at Will's Memorial Hall. Um, yeah, uh, you know, cl clearly from this photo, I, I thought I kn knew it all at the time. But uh, I was soon to find out that actually our pre-work lives don't set us up very well for making estimates. Now, that's not to say I le didn't learn a lot of really, really important skills on my degree. But on my assignments, I was always given a deadline. I was never asked, how long do you think this thing will take? And that's the same at, 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 sort of at school as well. Reason number two, no fixed spec. So at school and university, um, in your assignments, you're given a fixed spec for a project. It's laid out in black and white on your assignment paper, and you can go ahead and start working on that assignment with confidence that that's not gonna change through the, throughout the whole of term. Well, in the real world, that basically never happens. Um, I've learned to accept that there's gonna be a drip feeding of requirements on pretty much any project you work on. There's, uh, there's things that just don't come to light until you've maybe done an early demo or you've, or you've started testing your solution. <laughs> so over overconfidence is, is another reason. And this can be genuine naivety, uh, which was, was me at the start of this talk, but it can also be uh, people that are trying to, to, to make it look like they can achieve more than is realistic as well. In either case, it leads to a bad estimate. And finally, this is one that um, maybe you hadn't, you hadn't considered before, imposter syndrome. So this chap here is thinking, well, 
should this project really take this long, or is it just me? Am I just not smart enough to, to work here? It's definitely something I felt before, and it's, it's something uh, kind of kind of common among junior de developers. Uh, it's, it's sometimes called programmer's pride. You know, you don't want to admit that something's gonna take you a lot longer than it takes other people. And again, that can lead to, to estimates that aren't, aren't quite right. All right, we're gonna do a bit more audience interaction. Um, I've got an interactive game, so I'm gonna ask for your help to uh, debunk a few myths about estimates. Hope you're ready. Question number one. Estimates are always equal to deadlines. So put your hands up if you think that is true. No one, okay. Uh, put your hands up if you think it's false. Everyone, okay, good. Started with an easy one there to test you out. So yeah, I've actually printed the, the, defi the dictionary definitions here. So an estimate can be a verb or a noun. It's an approximate calculation or judgment of the value, number, quantity, or extent of something. Deadline, on the other hand, is the latest time or date by which something should be completed. Um, and one thing you'll notice fr from these definitions, an estimate suggests it's, it's mutable, it can be changed. A deadline, very much immutable. All right, let's, uh, let's do another one. Overly optimistic estimates can cause technical debt. So put your hands up if you think that, is, that statement is true. Okay, pretty much everyone. And put your hands up if you think it's false. No one, okay, great. Um, so yeah, so that's, you're, you're all right, well done. Um, so with overly optimistic timelines, you know, those things that we would do if we were given a bit more time often end up not getting done. So when you're up against it, um, adding just one more if statement or just one more method to a class that's already too big and should really be refactored, is something that's more likely to, to happen. And uh, you know, th this ultimately ends up as, as tech debt. All right, I've got one, one last one. Software engineers are extremely talented people working on really cool but really hard problems. They're changing the world, so stop <laughs> pestering them by asking them how long it'll take. <laughs> Put your hands up if you think this is true. Cool, okay, yeah, 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 all right, yeah. So that, that, I think that was about a quarter, a third of you. Um, put your hands up if you think it's false. Okay, good, yeah, that, so that's, that's what I was expecting, about, about the same, okay. Um, well, I can say the first part's definitely true. All of you are very talented people. Um, but th this, is, this is actually a really reasonable point, right? Like, if we hire really good people, uh, really talented people, um, and you know we trust them, and we put them on the top priority projects, then what, why do we really need to know how long it's gonna take them, right? It's the right people doing the right thing. It takes as long as it takes. Um, well, well, one of the reasons is we rarely get to work in isolation. Um, there are other dependent teams that, that are, are waiting on what you're doing, and they wanna build on the brilliant work you've done, right? So, Let's say I'm building a shiny new front end. Um, I need to know when the back end API is going to be ready before I know when I can launch it. Right, so um, I'm going to move on now to, to what I've learned and what are some of the lessons that, that you can take away uh, for providing better estimates. So, lesson number one don't work in isolation. Uh, this is a picture of me, actually me with my awesome team, and uh, it was at a two-day summit we held earlier this year just to get together. There are so many dependencies, both on you and on your code, and this is just the nature of working in teams and organizations. Important, communica important uh, communication skills are, are really, really important for, for navigating this. Lesson number two. Earn trust. In the longer term, you'll get a lot, lot more respect for providing longer estimates that you actually deliver on than provo for providing shorter estimates that you don't. If you're asked for an estimate and you're not sure, then say, I'll get back to you. And make sure you've got a decent under 
understanding of the scope of the problem before you start. Lesson number three, don't be afraid of getting it wrong. Estimates are never perfect. The best we can do is use our judgment, collaborate with others, and be aware of some of the blind spots that we might have. But you're not gonna get it right all of the time. Also, don't be afraid to sketch out estimates that are probably totally wrong, because the sketching out process in itself is, is actually quite useful. And finally, break tasks down into smaller chunks. So I normally break stuff down into something between half a day and three days, and that allows you to make lots of predictions each year. With that, you then get uh, a lot of feedback on, 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 on your estimates, and you can make lots and lots of estimates uh, throughout, throughout the week and the year. Ultimately, the more estimating you do, the better you're gonna get. Okay, so to round up, um, what advice would I give now to that naive young man that jumped up and said that piece of work was gonna take two days, but then it actually took two weeks? Uh, what would I say to him if I could go back in time 10 years and, uh, and talk to him? Well, the first thing I'd say is actually stay enthusiastic and keep up that can-do attitude. Um, yes, I was very naive and may maybe, uh, um, you know, and, and, and it turned out to be very wrong. But on, at the other end, end of the spectrum, I don't want to end up as someone that never volunteers my ideas because I'm just too worried about how long they're going to end up taking and then it's going to backfire. So I think that's, that's a really important point to start out with. Add a fudge factor for unknown unknowns. So these exist on, on any project and they can be technical or political unknown unknowns. Um, one good way of doing this is actually just doubling the initial estimate that you came up with. Um, and that often tends to work quite well. Set the expectation when you're giving the date or the, the, the time range that this is an estimate and therefore it, it, it can change. Um, so one way I do this now is uh, when I provide an estimate, I often give a tolerance afterwards. So I'll say, I think it's gonna take 10 days plus or minus three days. And then it's, you know, it's very obvious that it's not a, it's not set in stone. Oh yeah, and communicate progress along the way. Don't go into a hole. Um, it's important to let others know how, how you're getting on and that'll in, improve their trust in, in you and that you're actually gonna deliver on a solution. And there's one, one more point. I'd also tell him, don't work weekends to meet unrealistic targets. If you do this every single time you get an estimate wrong, you're not gonna, uh, you're not gonna end up with many weekends left. And at your age, you've got much better things to be doing with your weekends. Thank you very much. Thank you. Cool. That was really awesome. So we've got plenty of time for questions and discussions and, uh, and you can get involved. I've got a question to start out with, actually. Um, What's your experience of um, making group estimates? So I've often worked in teams where we were asked sort of independently to, to just think how long do we think this task is going to take? We have a range of different people in the room and often you know, everyone reveals what their estimate is and it's, the range is incredible. Then we vote again and suddenly we're on the same mark because everyone's aware of what everyone else is thinking perhaps at that point. And I can't help but feel a lot of our inaccurate estimates have come out of this sort of almost herd mentality sometimes. Um, so I don't know if you have any experience on that that you could share with us. Yeah, it sounds a bit like sort of planning poker. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I've, I've, done, I've done that before, and that's actually really good, especially when you have people um, that have a different, different range of experiences in a team, which is actually a good, a good makeup of a team to have people of different seniority. Um, and sometimes it's not until you've worked or you've got that experience that you know that certain things are going to take longer than... Than, uh, than they often do. Um, so yeah, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd fully I'd support that. That's a good way for, um, uh, you know, to sort of get a sense check uh, on your estimates and sort of keep everyone honest. Um, but I, I think even without a formal mechanism like that, you, you can do it. Um, 
Is this how you plan at Google? Do you do this? Uh, so I have done in the past. I don't, I don't currently. Um, you know, what, what I would do is, you know, our estimates are generally given in a team meeting. Um, and if I see sort of a, uh, especially, you know, more junior engineer give, give an estimate that I really think they're, they're not accounting for something, then I think it's important to, to call that out and say, you know, look, I, I think it's going to take longer than this so they don't get sort of strung up for exactly what I did at the start of this talk. <laughs> And do you look back at previous sprints and think, well, you know, last time we said, we do you use that like a velocity concept of like how many points you might have completed in previous sprints? Yeah, so definitely look back and um, and that's, yeah, that's that's how you get feedback on, on your estimates and you look and sort of do retrospectives and say, well, I thought this was going to take one month, took four months, um, uh, you know, what, what were the reasons for that and then learn those lessons for the next time. Cool. Do we have any questions in the room that want to contribute? Hi, thanks. So you told a story about a time when you had overpromised. How would you manage it in a case where, I'm going to say product owner, but it could be any internal stakeholder has overpromised for the team, maybe to a customer. Yeah, this will absolutely be ready <laughs> in two weeks' time. And then comes to you and says, well, I've already promised this, so get to it. How would you manage that expectation um, or that extra workload when perhaps what's been promised is not even possible to have to? Yeah, well, firstly, thanks for raising that question. I think actually a lot of people, I think everyone can relate to that. Um, uh, it's, it's certainly me. Um, it's, yeah, it's, it's a great question. So, I think firstly, it's important to have that that trust with your like product counterpart, um, and so that and, you know that only comes with time building it up. You know that when you give estimates, that you deliver on them and that they, they actually happen. And I think a product owner that's worked with um, worked with people that, that have given that, or that they've given they've given deadlines to that, that con consistently hasn't delivered. They know that it's. Um, Although you might be give, saying that this piece of work is going to take longer, um, they, they trust you to deliver, deliver on it, so they give you a bit more leeway. In, in your specific scenario where they've actually already gone and said, yeah, you know, and that, that's, that's more of preventing what you've described happening in the first place, should, should hopefully do that, because they, they trust in, 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 in you. Um, but if, if that's already happened, you know, maybe it's a new person you're working with, and um, uh, you, know, you haven't built up that trust yet, uh, I think, um, yeah, it's it, you know it it, it, dep <laughs> it depends on on how on how far out it is, but I think you know m making that expectation clear and and often actually it's just um, uh, breaking it down uh, ma makes it very clear. So if you actually just break down and say, well, look, we need two weeks to do this thing. Um, it's going to be two weeks two weeks for QA. There's nothing we can do about that. That's there. You know, there's it's going to take this amount of time for this. If you actually realize that the <laughs> the, the development bit is only a, a bit of a chunk of that and um, and often w once you, they've got that breakdown and they actually understand why it takes that long then um, I think uh, you often get a bit more sympathy as well hi thanks so I've been in situations in the past where I've been estimating work but there's vagueness to it so I've needed to ask questions to fill in the gaps but then I'm asked for an estimate before those questions are answered? Should I, or in that situation, should you say, no, I can't give an estimate, or would you give the worst case scenario for the answers to your questions? How would you handle that situation? Yeah, another a really good question there, actually. Uh, I, I, guess, I guess it depends on how, how time critical it is to, to get the estimate right there and then. So I, I, would, I would generally prefer, yeah, having a, a reasonable scope of the problem before giving an estimate, but, there are scenarios where maybe that person is about to go into a meeting um, uh, or, or something, or, or the, a key decision is about to be made, and you just don't have time to, to get that scope. Um, and yeah, I think, as you suggested, giving a worst case scenario is, is, is a good idea. Because um, even that, y you never know. Maybe that it's being compared to another project that has a worst case scenario that's, that's four times worse than that. And so that, that relative difference is still, is still useful. In your head, you might think this is 
you know, I've got such little certainty about this, how could this be useful to anyone? Um, but you've got to bear in mind that sometimes decision makers, you know, well, actually in most cases, decision makers, uh, it's like a black box for them. So they, 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 they want even some, some sense of it. Hi, um, what's your opinion on confidence scores on estimates? So um, you make an estimate and then you give it a one to five of how confident you think that estimate is? Like, yeah. Yeah, that, I think that's a great idea. I've, and I've done that in the past as well. Um, yeah, the, I think the important thing is to convey in some way, uh, however you do it, that it is subject to change. It's not a, a hard uh, date or time period. Um, so yeah, like, giving a range or giving a confidence is, I think is, is a really good idea. And, um, and that's, that's another way to compare two estimates because you could have two estimates of three months, but one is maybe a lot more risky, so you'd give it a lot of confidence. Um, yeah, I think that's a really good idea. Um. Have you uh, got any kind of mechanism to measure value as a function of a deliverable rather than just the estimate in terms of time it'll take to deliver a, that a, a piece of a, f a feature or something like that in terms of value to the business? I was just wondering there in terms of estimates, a lot of the time it's done on a commercial basis for calculating resource, uh, as you identified dependencies, but also resource costs, how many people are needed for a particular project, when it's going to be delivered, and so on as well. And I just wondered if there is any function of actual business value that's quantified against that. I'm not sure if that made sense. But yeah, so, so do you mean, um, like, look at, I think this project's going to be impactful. It's going to um, increase our user base by X, and it's going to take four weeks, versus this one's going to increase it by 2X, but it's going to take twice as long. So that's that sort of trade-off. Yeah, is that? I, I mean, maybe yeah. it's not really a question that's relevant specific just to estimates. Yeah. Uh, no, it's a, really, it's a good question um, because that that es estimates are just one uh, one factor that go into sort of project prioritization. Um, you know, actually, and it's 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 one factor that's often overlooked. Actually, um, generally, when we're doing uh, sort of uh, planning for what we're going to do in the next quarter. Um, you know, we'll look at the things that we think can deliver the most user, user value and have the most impact. Um, and that's 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 a key input. Um, you know, how many more users are going to see this? How many more users do we think this is going to bring? Or how much more revenue do, do we think this is, this project is going to bring? Um, and then estimates also go in. You know, pl play a part into that. So. Yes, maybe this this project is going to bring a lot more users, but uh, it's it's really really complex. There's a lot of uncertainty, and so our estimate is like it's going to take a year. Then it might still not get prioritized because it, you know, it, you you look for uh, the best trade-off in terms of the estimate versus the impact. I think. So hope that kind of answers your question. Oh yeah. Um, so if you reflect on projects that have gone really well, um, <coughs> what kind of artifacts did you have to make the best estimations? So do you sort of use story mapping? Have you, do you run tech spikes? What kind of things are the things that are going to help your team make the best decisions to, to, to estimate on? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I mean, actually, the the projects that I've worked on, the, the estimates went really well. Were actually the ones, um, you know, where there was the least uncertainty. So it was kind of like something I, like a feature I was building, but I'd already done something very similar to that before. I'd sort of gone down that road, if you like. But it was it was a variation on that and something that needed. So there was a high degree of certainty. Um, and I'd say it was my success in giving estimates was more related to my certainty over it. And that's not just that I've done it before, but also, um, you know, your experience with those technologies that you're using. Um, you know, some projects you start out and 
you often need to actually just learn the thing before doing the thing. So um, you're given a project and it's in a language you've never used before. It's uh, um, in, a, in a framework you've never used. Um, and that's, that's extra uncertainty and extra unknowns. And I think that's when it becomes harder often to estimate. Um, so, so, so yeah, so almost it's the less challenging projects in that sense that are, that are easier to estimate, but then sometimes they're also less interesting. But um, so, so yeah, that, that I'd say that more so than any particular tool. Um, I, I haven't found a common pattern across projects for, for making good estimates. Well, thank you very much. Uh, have a big round of applause for Amir. Yeah.